Hello everyone, I'm here today to make a video on EverQuest Project 1999 and make a tutorial for everyone just getting started with the game who's never played EverQuest before. There is a lack of quality uh, guides for just getting started. There's tons and tons of guides on all the classes, races, um, like when to, what to do, but like once you're in like that first, getting to level 2, is there's no information on it, or not enough. So I'm going to make my own. I have a friend trying to join in, so this is my way of providing all the resources you need to get started, be happy with your character, and give you the resources and tools you need to be capable of moving forward throughout the rest of your journey without too many hangups. So first, first off, once you've installed P99, which I will leave in the links below, all of the necessary resources for that, and guides to, to install P99. Once you've installed it, I have it right here. You'll boot it up and it will load here. You, ins you install it, boot it up, and you'll be greeted with the EULA. This is a bunch of the terms of services. Uh, we'll just accept that. You'll get to this login screen. You want to click login. And I already have my stuff in. You just want to put in your username and password login and you're looking and you'll be greeted with this server browser now this is the emulated servers for everquest there's a lot of them like a lot but the only one that we're going to talk about is project 1999 green this is the most populated one this is where most new players are going to want to start right now uh, as of the recording this video this is the most recent red is a pvp server Green, blue is more of a rating focus server and it has my understanding i've never played much on it but my understanding is it has v some non uh like true to 99 things and then there's p99 green which is the de facto p99 experience right now so we're gonna click play everquest right here or we can click quick connect if you've already played on it you don't have to select so click start the game and it will freak out and start loading. Now, I fully expect this to crash at least once. This game, especially the loading in and the menus are not always stable. So you're gonna click in here. I have a lot of characters already, but I have one extra slot, so we're gonna click create new character. Now when you start, you're gonna have a lot of, all these slots are gonna say create new character and you're, you're probably gonna agree with, uh, I believe a, human named noob or something it's not a real character just click create new character on one of these this is going to greet you to the character creation screen we're here we have your abilities on the right which is all your stats and the left here this is where you actually decide i want to be a male so i'm going to click male up here and then you have your races are on the left and your classes on the right now there's plenty of good class guides but i'm going to go over all the races and briefly go over all the classes so barbarians are very tall human char characters. They cannot see in the dark, um, and they can slam, which is a racial bash for anybody who is that race. Um, dark elves have hide. They're evil elves. Um, they start kind of near Freeport. They are just a pretty good race all around if you wanted to play evil. They have a wide variety of race of classes they can be. Dwarves are tough, and they can obviously can see in the dark. Everything can see in the dark unless I state otherwise. Um, dwarves are, are very tough. They have really good stats for melee classes. Um, race, they're over in the Fader area. Erudites cannot see in the dark, but they have outstanding stats for casters. Pretty middling stats for uh, warriors like the Shadow Knight and the Paladin, wherever that is, but they do have good items for them. The Gnome are very short uh, people. They can uh, tinker is one of their things. They can make items uh, as one of their trade skill options they get, and they are also very good caster races. Half elves are. I believe they can forage. I could be wrong with that, though. So, do that with a grain of salt. I, I mean, no, they can't forage, my bad. Uh, they are 
a mix between a human and a wood elf, I believe, and they could start in the human cities of Quenos or the or the elf city of Kelethin. If I remember, I believe that's right. Halflings are they can sneak and hide as racial uh, abilities, and they can they have a 10% experience bonus when you play them, so they level faster. Uh, high elves are they're elves. They have good caster stats. They they start in fader. Uh, there's not too much to say about them. They're solid. They're solid. They have good charisma. Humans cannot see in the dark. Uh, they have pretty average stats, and they can be every single class except shaman. Ixars are notably hated by everybody. Um, to the point of anything that's not their starter city is hostile to them. So, you'll be on your own a lot of the time. Um, they are good, they are excellent monks, and and probably the best necromancers. They have regeneration, so they, they heal faster by sitting out of combat. They have an addition, they have a bonus to their armor class, and they can forage. Ogres can they have they can slam and they have frontal stun immunity, meaning if they're getting attacked from the front, they can't be bashed or stunned in that from the, from the front like cone. Um, they are also have the highest melee stats in the game, but they're an evil race along with dark elves. Um, so dark elves, ogres, and trolls are kind of all in a faction together. Everyone else is on a faction together. And then Ixars are just alone. Uh, trolls have regeneration. They're the second highest stats, if I remember correctly. Um, and I think that's it. And then there's wood... Oh, see what I mean? And there's wood elves. Wood elves are... I mean, these might be able to forage, unlike the half-elves. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on this. Uh, they start in... Calithin. Yes. Sorry, I'm blanking. Alright. And then to go over the classes really briefly, let me go to human here real quick. Oh, and if you ever tab out, like I have here, you can press Alt and then Enter, and it will full screen it again. Um, and then also if you're tabbing out of the game, Alt, Enter again. Very important keybind. So first we've got Bard. Um, for a newer player, I would not recommend Bards. Bards are an outstanding class. They are a jack of all trades, master of none. They're some of the best pullers in the game outside of monks. They have tons and tons and tons of utility. However, they are very intensive to play as you constantly have to be uh, ignoring the other stuff playing the game. You constantly have to be twisting songs, which involves a lot of button presses and strategy. And they're fun to play, but they're taxing. And for a new player who's just learning the game, probably not the best choice. But if you want to play a bard, go for it. Clerics are the de facto healers of the game. They can wear plate armor. So can bards, by the way. I forgot to mention they can wear plate armor. Clerics can wear up to plate armor. They are they have the most efficient heals in the game. They have massive AC and HP buffs, and they can revive people for experience. Uh, druids are another healer class, but they're probably the le least amount of healing. They have some regeneration buffs, some thorns which is if you get attacked, then they get damaged back. They can teleport is their big thing. They can they can cast spells that will teleport their entire party to different parts of the world. And in a game where there is no fast travel, you are the fast travel, right? Uh, enchanters are a class with a lot of utility. They can haste people and make them attack faster. They can make people regenerate mana faster. They have a ton of other buffs and abilities, as well as the ability to illusion to be any other race, um, and along with some things that aren't playable races, which means their faction issues are non-existent so long as you play an agnostic character. Um, that's a, They can also charm enemies and make them their pets. So, Magicians, they are a wizard. They can nuke and uh, do a lot of fire and elemental damage, and they get very powerful elemental pets. Uh, this is an outstanding class for a new player to pick up. They 
are not that hard to play, they're very powerful, they're not gear dependent, and you will definitely be able to get a grip with the game with this. You just have to learn how pets work, which we will explain. Monks are a, uh, another good class for beginners. They are a melee DPS class and also a standing pullers. Um, they don't really need anything. They, their punches have are very effective. They have a, like their punches become an actual like proper weapon, so their hand to hand is viable as long as they're they are good with blunt weapons as well. Um, they kick. They can feign death, which is their main, which lets them just pretend they died and enemies kind of like oh they're dead and they walk away um and then they also can mend which is an ability that lets them heal themselves necromancers ha are a class that i love and is another great beginner class they have a lot of dots which is damage over time abilities so you cast a spell on an enemy and they start dying slowly with p diseases uh they have s some pets so they can they're very good soloing because so if you get into a situation where you got an enemy attacking you, you send your pet, the pet can take the damage while you just cast spells and damage it. Uh, they can fear kite, which makes them able to solo safely in a lot of different areas. They also have an ability to convert hit points to mana, so they're very efficient and they don't have to spend a lot of time sitting around. And they kind of just have a lot of abilities that other classes get, except for themselves and usually with a downside. Um, Paladins are a class that... They're one of the tanks. They're one of the three main tanks. They are a mix between a cleric and a warrior. Uh, so they get some healing spells. They're tanky. They can blind to pull aggro. They're pretty They're pretty solid. They're also very good against undead, getting like ward undead and such spells to damage undead. Um, they also have the ability Lay on Hands, which is a ability you can use every 72 minutes in real time. So one day in the day-night cycle of EverQuest. And it heals you for an amount that scales with your health. It's usually enough to heal about 90% of your hit points. And you can also use it on yourself or anyone else. So it's a great just it's a great protection thing to have. Rangers are supposed to be one of the tanks, but really they're just an off tank that tank when there's no one else to. Uh, they can they fight good, they can dual wield, they are a mix between a druid and a warrior, but they can't wear plate armor like the other hybrid tank, or hybrid classes can. Uh, they get the they get a lot of the things druids get, so they can heal a little bit, they can cast some buffs, they do not get the ability to teleport, that is a druid thing, as well as wizards, um, but we'll get to that. And they're very, they have the ability to track which lets them see a list of nearby enemies or mobs and also players. So they can click on them and that would guide them to it. So they have a very easy time finding things. Uh, and they also have the only ones that can use bows for... Oh, they can... There's other people that can use bows, but they're the only ones that can really make use of the damage and whatnot of bows. Um, Rogue is a class that's very simple to play. They do a decent amount of damage, but they're very much dependent on their weapons and skills. They are also a class I would steer away from for newer players, not because they're bad, not because they're complicated, but because if you're if you don't have a team, you're going to struggle. I played a rogue for a while, and if you once you get to about level like 7, 8, enemies on your own just aren't killable. Like, you have to be fighting blues, which is a mob type we'll get into. Like, a blue mob is a threat, and that's really unusual, and makes their leveling process very difficult. Shadow Knights are a mix between a necromancer and a tank, or the warrior, excuse me. They have the abilities, they're really good group tanks. They can life tap like necromancers. They do not get a lot of the things necros do, but the things that they do get are very, very powerful. They also do get low level pets. About half, roughly, your pet will always be about half of your level when you're playing a, a Shadow Knight. Um, they get disease spells. They're very, a very fun class to play and very powerful. Um, but they are evil, so it's worth knowing that. I'll get to the shaman in a minute. The warrior is another class I might steer clear from. And for beginnings, not again, not because they're difficult, but because they are 
very much group dependent. They, these ones I would say are definitely easier to play than Rogue, um, just because they have the best stats to just fight things. Um, but that being said, they don't have a lot going for them. They can kick, they can bash, they can dual wield. They do all the fighting things of all the other melee classes better than them, except they're not as high DPS and they don't have any utility. They can use a lot of armor and weapons, they have a lot of exclusive stuff for them, but yeah. They're cool, they're fun to play, but just just a word of warning for those wanting to play them. Wizard is the last class that can teleport. They do not get a pet, but they have very powerful nukes. They do a ton and ton of damage when they have mana, but when they're out of mana, they're kind of useless. So, they're a very powerful class. They can teleport the party like druids can. Um, and they're just good characters all around. And then we have shamans. I'm going to go to an Ike Star for this one. So, shamans are a priest class. They're the third healer. Um, they have a lot of very powerful buffs. They do get a pet, although it is very, very late into the game, about level 30 range. Um, they also get the ability to cannibalize, which is a ability that lets them damage themselves for mana. Uh, like on an instant, like, not instant, but you cast it. It's like casting a nuke on yourself, and then you get some mana back. It's pretty cool, but they also get that pretty late as well. And they can do alchemy. Uh, I forgot, it's also worth mentioning that rogues get poison craft, that is a unique thing they can do. And enchanters are the only ones that really get any value out of jewel crafting if you want to go into the trade skills side of things. Alright, so, now that that's all said and done, let's actually make our character here. Alright, so I'm going to choose to make a gnome magician. Uh, I believe that's kind of where I want to start. Yeah, let's do this. Now let's go over to our abilities. Now you see we have this points left. Now depending on your class, um, maybe, yeah, here we go. Depending on your class, you have anywhere from 20 to 30 points to spend. Now, where's my magician? They'll have it in, so all these are all the stats in the game. They're strength, stamina, agility, dexterity, wisdom, intelligence, and charisma. Now, when you're... When you're looking at your abilities, there's a very important thing. The first thing you want to do is you want to look at your agility and make sure it is at least 75. If it's below 75, you need to spend your points with these up and down arrows to make sure that it is at or above 75. This is, if it's, because because if your agility is below 75, you take massive hits to your armor class and you cannot take any damage. You will just die. And it will make your life very, very difficult throughout the entire time you're playing that character. Other than that, the ones highlighted in green are the recommended or important starting stats. Uh, in my case, intelligence is the most important stat. It affects my mana. So let's go over just some of the more important stats to talk about. So stamina affects your health. Um, strength is your damage when you're using melee weapons. Uh, agility is the ability to avoid hits. Um, past 75, it's not that useful, but getting make sure it is at least at 75. <coughs> Sorry, I have COVID right now. Dexterity is an ability that affects a few different things, but primarily the most important one is weapon proc. So there will be certain weapons in the game that when they attack, they have a chance of proccing, quote-unquote, proccing an effect, meaning causing an effect to go off. Now, the higher your dexterity is, the more chance that the higher that chance is. Wisdom affects your ability to, this this wisdom affects your mana for classes that are the priest classes being cleric shaman and uh, druid as well as a few other classes namely paladin intelligence affects your mana for the uh, caster cloth wearer classes that being enchanter magician necromancer and wizard as well as shadow knights um, and then Charisma affects your prices in shops. It's also worth noting that Bard and Enchanter want high Charisma because it also affects... Bard, Dexterity, and Charisma affect their chance of failing notes. If they have bad Charisma and Dexterity, they struggle to cast spells. And Enchanter wants high Charisma so that their charms can keep going. But for me, I just want a ton and ton of Intelligence, so we're going to pump all of our points that we can into Intelligence, and it'll let us point 25. That is the highest amount you can put into a starter stat. 
The last few points we're going to put into... Well, we'll put him into stamina because it recommends it. All right. Uh, it's also worth noting strength actually affects your carrying capacity. And now that I'm thinking about it, I'm actually going to put those extra five points into strength so I can carry just a little bit more. All right, I'm going to click next. No, no, we're not quite done yet. We also want to click the set face button. And this is the only character customization you get in Project 1999. You can go between the faces, and they, yeah, it's a little bit of a variety. I like this one. It looks a little warty. It's interesting. Next. Next, we have our city. Now, if you have multiple starting cities, you get to choose them here. Uh, for now, I only have Akanon as my starting city. The, the uh, not dwarf, gnome starting city. And I have a options for deities. So there is, I, there's a lot of gods in this game. But the two that I the two I have access to are the Plague Burner, Toxilus, and the Duke of Below, Brelsaris. Brelsaris is uh, mostly the little folk kind of god, and Toxilus, the Plague Bringer, is a evil god. I'm gonna avoid being that. I'm actually gonna choose this other option here, Agnostic. Now, Agnostic means that you don't conform to a deity, uh, and it usually just means if you can be Agnostic, I recommend it for newer players. It, you don't have access to certain items, but those items are very specific, and you have to know ahead of time you want them to make to get them. Um, and agnostic just gets you out of a lot of trouble. And then up here, you get to pick a name. I don't know what I want to name, so I'm going to click this Get Name button, and it's going to come up with a name for me. I actually like that. Bilkrin. And we click Next. It does not like it. Someone else has this name. All right. Natic. I like that too. Let's try it. Reject it. We'll, we'll, we'll try and modify names. We can go up here and we can press shift and the uh, arrow keys will let me cycle between these. So, uh, Natijik. Natijik. Why not? Sure, let's try it. There we go. And now we're loading into the world. Now, while we wait here, it's going to load it up, and we are in. Now, we are, where are we? This is just where we spawn. So we can scroll in and out to switch in and out of third person. We can hold right-click, and that lets us kind of cycle where we're looking. Um, we can hold left, or D and A lets us move. Now, it's important to note, if your keybinds are different, which they might be, um, they might be the arrow keys which case you're going to plan to press Alt and O, and that brings up this Options menu. Now, this Options menu has a lot of important things, but the main one is the first thing I want to you to click on is Use Tell Windows. So this means when someone sends you a direct message, it'll pop up with a new window so you can see that, and you can just type back, into, back and forth right straight from that. Uh, that'll help you out a lot. Um, and then right here in the keybinds, you'll find all the keys here for your commands, and then there's also various others. Now, I do not like this, you know, setup, these, these skins. So we can type in slash load UI into this main chat window down here, and that, oh, slash, slash load UI and that ah slash load skin there we go my bad load skin this lets us just choose between the different skins now this is the default uh Velius expansion I think or no this is Velius oh, okay that's why we have that one so slash load skin my slash load skin my apologies all right we'll just go with the default skin here and that will bring us to this this is our menu so let's just see things now let's go over the menus here because there's a lot of them and they're very confusing this right here is our spell window this has all of this is where we would put in our spells if we had any and we can click on them or press control and that button 
to cast them. There's also right here, this button is opens our spell book, which brings it up right here. This is where we can put in spells that we get in the future. This down here, this is our hot bar. Um, pressing one, one through ten on your keyboard will use these uh, things. These are spell gem slots, spells. Yeah, you press I on our keyboard, and that brings up the inventory right here. We can move this to a desired location, and we can see that this we have our information here. We got our stats. We've got our resistances, our weight right here, and this is our inventory. Now, this is our this inventory contains some starter items for us. So first off, we have a dagger. This is our starter weapon that the game has provided with us. Now you can hover over it and then hold right click will pull up this window here. And if you want it to stay up, you hover over it and then release and then it'll stay up. You can press exit here. This shows us all of our stats. So it says this is just no drop, which means we cannot take it out. And you normally could click outside the inventory, but it says this item cannot be dropped, traded, or sold. So we're, we're stuck with it, and we cannot sell it. This shows us the um, slots that it can go in, primary and secondary. However, we cannot dual wield, so it can only go in our primary. Now that primary slot is right here, and you can hover over to see what slot is what. And there is a lot of them, so I suggest doing so. We'll click that over here, and you'll see it equips to our guy. Yep, right there, you got a little dagger. And this first thing, we got the piercing attack delay. This lets us know that it is a piercing weapon, and the attack delay is 24. Now, this is in tenths of a second, so this fought, this will sh this will stab every two and a half seconds, roughly. Now, that's not exactly right, but that's a good way to think about it. Damage 3 is the base amount of damage that it will do every time we stab someone. Now, we also have food and water here with our bread cakes and our skin of milk. And we have a few different uh, letters and a Tome of Order in Discord. Now, the Tome of Order in Discord is important to just get rid of it. It is how you turn on PvP. We don't want that. This registration letter right here, we right-click, and it'll be a different letter for each, each race and class. We'll pull up this right here and i'm going to close out this window here this is the note that we want to turn into our guild master he will then give us our chess slot item just a little starter thing to get us started with as well as a little bit of experience and it will say here we welcome new student of the eldritch conclave take this registration list letter to master wugan azusphere in the library magic mechana magica he will be your new instructor study hard and you shall obtain your goals We'll click done here. And then we have two spells here. Spell Burst of Flame and Minor Shielding. Now we can hold down right click and see what these do. And it'll tell us that they are for Druid, Shaman, and Magician at level 1. It's the Evocation skill. Costs 7 mana. And that's it. So what do we do with these? It's not like we can right click them. They don't do anything. So what we do is we pull up that spell book from earlier. And we sit down to meditate is what that's called. And we can click on one of these, and we click on one of these slots in here. And we click on it, and it'll start memorizing the spell. There is Burst of Flame. Burst of Flame for us is a, a attack spell that will do some damage. Then we can then... I did that pretty quickly. Hold on, let me let's do this. Let me get the other spell in here. The other spell we have is Minor Shielding. Minor Shielding, we'll put it right underneath. Why not? And we can always... You can right-click these, and then right-click somewhere, um, somewhere else to move the spells around in your book so feel free to organize that later if you want to um but for now we're going to click on the spell and it'll put it to our it'll attach to our little uh cursor and we can bring it over to our spell gems which is what these are called uh and then we want to click and it'll start with this purple bar counting down and memorizing the spell now we're going to wait for that to happen. It takes a little bit of time because this is a spell at our level. Now the higher level we are, casting low level spells will be much easier to put it into our spell gems. And we also want minor shield. And I'm going to put it down here. And we're going to wait for this. This game takes time and uh, that's all right. And you'll notice that these were these are spell gem slots. One, two, three. And that's so these ones are here. Slots, sorry, I, I don't know what I said there, but I meant to say slots. It's also worth noting that 
these go in the order of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10 on your keyboard in that way. Alright, now let's stand up, and I want to cast this Minor Shielding. Now, there's different... The colors of the spell gems determine who it targets. So a red spell gem targets a whoever you're clicked on. So you can click on someone, and it'll show that I'm clicked on me right here. And I know it's disorganized, we'll get to that. And then I could click on that and it would target me now i don't want to do that because that'll damage me um however i do have a spell gem called minor shielding now yellow means that it only targets me just me now there's a few others but mostly you're just going to have yellow and red i think there's one that if you don't want to know what it is i'd google it look it up but we're going to click on this minor shielding and you'll see we start casting it and it's going to go down and use with them some mana and it's going to give us increased maximum health points as well as some armor class fantastic but i don't like this ui so let's figure out how we can change it so we can move stuff around by clicking on the up here moving it and i want this like here this is my target window so i want that like here this up here is my group this shows me who i'm in a party with uh we're gonna put that right here why not and this is me. This shows me my hit points. I'm going to put this... Actually, I want this underneath. So we're going to move this. Boom. And this shows me my health, mana, and endurance. Endurance is irrelevant. It just determines how jumping works. I think it was supposed to have other stuff, when it, but it never really get, got a use. And then this is our effects window. This shows us what effects we have up. Right now we have minor shielding. We can hold down right click and it tells us nothing. Because that's right, we don't get to know. That comes later. Now, let's look around. Where are we? We don't know. I do, but that's beside the point. So let's Alt-Enter, right? This loads us in here. And let's pull up this. This is the Project 1999 wiki. Now, if we go back here, we have our main chat. We're going to scroll up, and when we spawned in, did it not tell us where we are? Alright, well, we know we're in Akinon, right? Because it's where we decided to spawn. So we're going to type in to here, Akinon, and it'll come up right here. We click on it, and there we go. We have the web page here. Now, what's important is there's a lot of information here. We're not going to, a lot of this doesn't matter, but we're going to look at this map right here. We kind of click on it, but actually, we don't want to do that. We want to back up. And this has a ledger of where everything is. So we're looking for the Magician Guild. All right, and we're going to kind of go here. So we got a Warrior Guild in 14, Warrior Trainer and Evil Rogue Trainer in 3. Um, we want... Now, it's worth noting that when you start the game, you'll always spawn in front... Okay, I lied. I thought you usually spawn in front of a... Priest of Discord, but I guess not. So we're gonna look around and like Lyra Liar Stringer and Guide Three. Apologies for that. Moving on. All right. So we don't have a map though, but we do have it from our page right here. So we're gonna try and figure out where we are. So we've got trying to figure out so we've got a big temple thing here we've got like two buildings all right so let's look and try and figure that out like a giant temple thing that kind of looks like it might be here yeah we got a big that's the temple probably yeah right so we're, we're right here all right now let's see and library mecha magica i remember that from the uh, little trainer thing we had, the uh, whatnot. And this is a magician, uh, enchanter, and wizard trainers. All right, that's what we want. So it says that that's number 10, and that's right here. So it looks like we have to go down this. No, that's water. That, this path right here. That looks like it right there. So let's tab back into the game. 
and walk this way. Then we go up here. Now this will be different for every starter character, but it's important to look it up and figure that out. Uh, it might take you some time, but that's all right. So we're going to go over here. And wow, there's a lot of people here. So we're look, who are we looking for? So let's pull up our inventory and right click on this registration le re window again. Letter, hello? There you go. To Master Wugen. Done here. Master Wugen. Got Julian Urncaller. Uh, huh. Herbra. Turgon. Wugan. Wugan Azuosphere. So we're going to click on him. That's, yeah, that's the guy. And we're going to grab this out of our inventory and click on him with it. And it'll pull up this give window. And we're going to click give. And we got some experience. And this robe here. Now this robe gives us two hit, two AC. It's a lore item, which means you can only have one of it. So we're gonna put it on, and then we'll go here. And wow, voila! We now have a robe. And we also want to right-click on him. He is that's a merchant. So that's this clockwork merchant here. So the hitboxes are a little wonk in this game. So we're gonna get right and close, nice and close and personal. This pulls up this training window. And there's a lot of skills here. The one we're looking for is... We can't train that yet, I know that. That's a level 4. Is We're looking for the Sense Heading skill. You want to click one point into that and click Train. And that should be good. Now, we're going to go to our Socials. That's not right. We're going to go to Abilities page. Right click on this and you'll pull up Choose a Skill. We've got Bind Wound, Sense Heading, Fishing, and Begging. Now the one we care about is Sense Heading. We're going to click on that, and we can hold this down, and we're going to put it on number 10. And we'll click this out. We don't care about find. All right, now we can click this, and it failed. You have no idea what direction you're facing. Now, what this skill does is when you press it, it tries to give you the direction you're facing, like if you're facing north, south, east, or west. But if you look at our skills, now we go to the our inventory and go down to the bottom left. Skills this up now we can see our skills are non-existent we're only level one in sense setting the reason we had to level it up because sense setting is a skill that needs to be trained before it can start leveling up but every time we click on this it has a short cooldown but yes we're going to keep failing but eventually it might work but i don't want to sit here and click this for hours and hours and hours trying to learn how this works so i'm going to go and go into alt o that was not the right button, that was control O. Alt O, pull up the options menu again, and click on our keys, and go to our hotbar 1. Now, there's a lot of stuff here, but let's click the alternate here, or we'll click the key press and make this A, and this alternate D, for hot button 10. This is temporary, eventually we'll bring this back to 10. So now, if I press 10 on my keyboard, or 0 on my keyboard, it doesn't do anything. However, when I'm walking around and turning, it's going to automatically press that button. But you'll notice a problem already. You see our main chat here is getting flooded. So let's, figure, let's fix that out. Let's move over here, back to where we started. And we're going to make some more chat windows. The first one we want to make is we're going to right-click on the main chat window and click New Chat Window. That pulls up another one. We can move it around, move it to the side. And this one I want to be a combat window. So we're going to click Filters, and I want it to just be Melee All. All right, and I also want it to be a simplified one, so that I recommend putting simplified solely because it makes it easier. So you go to Hit Modes, All, and we just want to do Abbreviated. That way, it makes it a lot more readable. Then we want to have another window. New chat window. And I'm going to rearrange these just a bit. 
you can always perfect this later. This, I want to have all the people talking to me. So we'll want say. We want group. We want raid. We want OOC, which is out of character, and that's an important one to have. We want auction. And we want shout, as well as emotes. And then we're also going to go ahead and do us a favor and filter this channel, or no, ch make this channel and switch it to group so that we can talk to our group in this window. So if, we have, if we're have, we in a group of players, we can just click in here and start typing blah, 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 blah. And it's going to complain to us that we're not in a group. But if we were, it would just tell our group that and not spam everyone around us. All right, now that we still have the problem of... Oh, we, there's, we think we were facing southwest, so that skill didn't work. But we still have the problem of we're getting spammed in here. So we're going to make one more chat window. We're going to make this smaller. And just move it to the side. And we're just going to make this our skills. Bam. Now we're not getting spammed here. And we have all of our stuff neatly organized. Or less than neatly organized, however you feel. And we're good to go. So now we got to actually figure out what we're doing. So what next? We're set. From here, we need to go kill stuff and level up. Well, where do we do that? We're going to go back out and go to our map. Now, every map is going to have something like this, where you can show where did you go to the next one. Now, some places have two, some places have one. This takes us to Steamfront Mountains. This is the starter area for gnomes. Now, we're over here, so we're going to have to take this route right down here and into Steamfront Mountains. And we'll go that way, like this. And you'll see that our, our minor shilling has started to fade. So we're going to want to click that again, just to make sure that we still have that, because we're going to want it, trust me. Da, 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 da. And we go through this area here. And we're going to go through here. So this area, and I'm actually going to tab back into the game. There we go. Going through. And I believe we want to go through this way. This looks right. beautiful music. We have some clockworks. Now, the Gnome City is known for having a bunch of clockworks because they're very smart. They tinker. So that is something we might get to do later. Magic. Going through. We're just going to follow this up and maybe get lost. I don't know where I am. This looks right. Yep. And you're in your game freezes when you're trying to walk down a hallway. Usually that means you're zoning. You'll see the loading please wait in the main chat there. P99 green. And is it welcome to... You have entered Steamfront Mountains. Now this is where we want to be. Now there's another player right here. His name's Compiler. Hello, Compiler. Goodbye, Compiler. And it takes us to this area. Now Steamfront is going to be different than any other wherever you are is going to always be a different place but you're generally going to want to be looking for rats and skeletons as well as bats the low level uh i know because of experience that i like to go over this way uh and i like to kill stuff in this little ravine over here there's some big spiders uh they're red to me and i'll show you how to do that in just a second this ravine right here, and I like to sit up on this fight stuff. Now, there you have a decaying gnome skeleton. Now you can see that in here if I click on him. And let's go down in here. We want to be careful because some stuff will kill us on sight. Or attempts to. And he's gone. Oh, like that! Now, we're in a situation right now. We can press C to see if this is a fight we can take. Well, that's our decaying gnome skeleton. We want the small coyote. He's yellow to us. Yellow means that it is a very big threat, and we cannot take it at this level. Uh, usually, they're one to two levels above you. Oh, we might die here. Oh, yeah. This is fine. This, teach this can teach us something. So you have been slain by a small coyote. 
Well, this is fine, because we can now learn how death works. So when you die, you're going to load back in at your spawn point, wherever that may be. Luckily, mine is right here. And you have to go find your corpse. Now, see, if I notice, I have no items. Now, normally, if, this was a, if I was above level 5, I can lose experience. However, I am below level 5, and I cannot lose experience. So we're going to go back, and you can go over to your corpse, and you right-click it. And we can just loot all our items back. <coughs> Usually you have seven days to get this back, and don't worry, no one else can loot it. You're fine. Um, and then we also need to get our spells back, because that also reset. Um, it is kind of unfortunate, but that is what happens sometimes. What you want to do where I was running those, I was running back to these guards over here. No, I can't show you right now because I'm scribing. These guys over here. Because they will kill anything that's hostile to me. I run through. Now, I could have probably ran to that guy, but I probably still wouldn't have made it. I also want to get burst of flame. Now, when you you're low on health, you actually start to slow down, so it's harder to run away. <laughs> All right. Now we want to cast minor shielding. This game's hard. Um. And you're going to learn that real quick. So let me try. You notice my me getting better at that sense heading. That's good. That'll let us navigate better. Kobold Runt. You white to us. So what we're going to do is let's, let's look at this enemy. This is a spiderling. It says right there. Now we're going to click on him and right click. Or we can click on him and then press C. And it'll see him down in our main menu. The spiderling regards you indifferently. Looks like quite a gamble. Indifferent means that he won't attack me on sight. Um, but looks like quite a gamble. That means it's yellow to me, and I'm not ready to fight it. Probably level 2 or 3. Now, we're looking for a white at this level. Alright, so that runaway is yellow. So this decaying no skeleton right here, if I see him, he is indifferent, but he's white to me. And I know that these guys don't have faction issues, so I'm going to attack him. And I'm going to run away. Now, the reason I'm doing this is because I don't want to fight him there, because there's a lot of wandering coyotes, and I don't want another one to come kill me. So we're going to back up, and we're going to... You press, you click on him and press Q, or your melee attack, if you have it. And that'll initiate the melee attack, and you will start fighting it. Now, you can press these buttons here, and cast a burst of flame spell. Maybe. And blow him up. Now, he noticed he was interrupting me. Um, so if you are low at levels trying to cast, you have a chance of getting interrupted every time you get attacked. Now, this guy is kicking my ass. Come on. Alright, we got him. Now, he is dead. But I still don't have the loot from him, so I want to right-click on him. And you hear I just received six copper for my troubles. So this is, you have copper, silver, gold, and platinum, and they go ten to the next one, so... And we looted some bone chips. Now we can grab these and we'll sell them later for more spells. Now, I'm low on health, so what do I want to do? I also have used some mana. So I'm going to come over here and press Control and S to sit. Now, sitting means you regenerate mana and health twice as fast. Now, once you get meditate, that becomes not entirely true. You start regenerating mana even faster, but it does let you heal and sit out of combat and regenerate faster letting you play the game more by not and this gives you opportunity to talk to your teammates to strategize to rethink your to rethink your life whatever you need to do it, it helps a lot now the goal here is we're trying to get enough experience to level to two all right yeah and we're doing all right We'll let it get to 100. And we're going to look for another one. I want another skeleton. There's one. Decaying gnome skeleton. Now, I'm going to try and cast to bring him over to me. This is why I like this area, because I can run. I cast. I'm going to run away. That aggroed him. So he is now running to me. He's, I'm mad at you. You blew me up. I'm going to kill you. So now he's attacking. I'm going to activate my melee attack with Q and start fighting him. Now, some, some cat classes will have skills that they can use during combat to fight. Um, it'll work just like sense heading. You click on it, as and it has a cooldown, and it'll go off. So kick and bash, uh, slam, that kind of thing. All right. 
Alright, I'm gonna try and blow him up, because I'm not good at fighting. Maybe. Boom. Eat that. And we're gonna come over, right-click, loot him. Bam! Early clockwork. No, I'm not trying that. And that's how this game goes. Now, once we're done with that, you can see we've gotten some experience. We wanna once we get it out, we'll get to level two. Um, where can go back? We get slash wave. This is a high level player here. Looks like a wizard to me. This stoop kid left the stop, and he cheers at me. Oh, I don't know if he's doing anything. Oh, I don't know what that is. Thank you. He offered us gargoyle. And that's just a great example of the community here. I don't know who that is, but he just gave me some gargoyle eyes. I don't know what these are worth, but it looks to be worth something. So I'm going to go over here. And... We want to go into these little tents here. These guys have some merchants for us. And we can sell, and so we click on the click on we right click on him and pulls up this merchant window. We can buy items by clicking on them and buying and clicking to buy. We have enough, but we don't. We can click on items we have and sell them, and he'll give us one silver and four copper pieces. So, bam. And then these are holy crud, nine platinum a piece. Now that's a lot of money for those who are new. That is a significant amount of money. Then we're going to sell these, and that gave us 75 plat to start off. That's huge. That's a ton of money. So we're going to go back and buy our spells. Now, normally, you're probably going to have to grind and fight for your spells, but this generous man just let us get all of them. So that's very cool. Um, at some point, you might get some uh, pets, in which case... You're going to want to use the commands slash pet attack, uh, slash pet back to control them. Pet attack will make the pet go off and fight whatever you're targeting, and slash pet back will make it kind of run back to you if it was fighting something. I would, and you can use these socials, right? Go right to the left, or to the right one, right click, and we can input commands. So slash pet attack, now that we're a pet class, right? We'll do the attack is the name. Accept, and then we want to put this over our here, and we can click on someone and click that. And if we had a pet, he would go off and fight that. Now we don't want to, we don't want to fight that because he will kill us. But yeah, so we're gonna go off and get some more starter spells, and we're gonna call that how that call that the uh, EQ experience, how to get started, whatnot. You want to? I'll link the Wikipedia down in there. Google any questions you have. If you cannot find them on the wiki, you can ask around. Um, I'm sure there's some Discord channels you can get into. I don't know any of them off the top of my head, personally. I think Play99 has their own, and that would be a great place to ask questions. Um, we'll just run back. Sorry, we're going all the way back. Um, this game has a great community. When you're fighting with people, you can always just ask, or even people you're not, you can always ask questions. If you're lost or you're trying to do something, People will be ha more than happy to guide you for the most part. Uh, and this game has a, a the attitude of pay it forward. So if you receive kindness like I did from that good sir, um, you're kind of expected to, whenever you get into a position that you're comfortable with helping someone out, to also you know help someone out. Now let's go get these merchants. So here, this is how we get new spells. So we'll go right click on him, and we see we have a lot of spells here. Um, burn. And we can right click and see this is for a level four magician. So level four is when we get our next spells. We got burst of flame. I think that's what we already have, right? Yep. Elemental kin air. These are our pets, right? These are we get at level four. Fire flux flare. Grab that. Claim energy. I think that becomes useful. Fire flux can't get yet. Summon bandages. We can summon, so we can summon da oh, we can summon a dagger. Some drinks. Food. I don't know if we can summon food. We can. Yeah, so we can go all these spells. 
and then we can go into our book and start putting these in here and that costs us just a plat and if you're ever stuck always ask for help people would be half more than happy to all right and we can now put these on here if we really wanted to that something makes us summon pets so we can get food and again that takes time as we all know we've probably established pretty consistently we got flare now flare might be a aoe spell i might be able to talk about that no it's not all right well that's everything so thank you all for watching send this to any new players you think could use it it i'm really hoping to just use this as a resource i will have all kinds of resources in the bottom for different classes and races and information that you might need um feel free to comment down below if you have any questions i would love to answer um, and uh good luck out there